Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy from Cichlid Bros. In today's video, we're adding a pin plax canister filter to the 75 gallon aquarium. We're gonna be unboxing, setting it up, and then giving kind of a product review and our thoughts on this canister towards the end of the video. If you've been following along, we recently set up this 180 gallon aquarium over my shoulder here. And when we did that, we moved the pin plax canister that was on the 75 over along with the fish to make sure that tank was fully cycled. But now we have new fish in our 75 gallon aquarium and we needed to get a replacement filter. We've had a lot of success with this filter so far and we'll talk more about that. But let us know in the comment section below what your experiences with this filter has been. We'd love to hear from you as well. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and let's dive right in. So the pin plaques that I've had previously, it's about three years old now. It's now running on the 180, which is looking great. So the pin plaques on the 180 is kind of a secondary filter as I also have an FX6 on that tank. But for a 75 gallon tank, this pin plaques canister filter is definitely sufficient. It has a ton of flow and that's what we're gonna set up today. Okay, so the pin plaques doesn't come in a fancy box like your FX6 or Sun Suns, but it came in this box straight from Amazon. So let's open it up. First box right here, looks like we have a bunch of different sponges and filter media. We got a big box here. All right, well, let's get this out of the box. So it looks like the first thing just right here is the canister. Wow. Very nice, we'll get this set up shortly. And then the only other box in here looks like all the hosing and intakes, some suction cups, the attachment to the canister itself, the intake and outtake, and here's the hoses, and also some instructions. So we'll get this all set up and show you the process there. All right, so here's everything unwrapped and out of their packaging. We have the canister itself there. We have the hosing here, which we'll need to cut to fit to the tank. We got the attachments to the intake and outtake. There's a lot of suction cups which go with the spray bar that this comes with. I typically don't like the spray bar. I kind of like this piece more as you can direct it towards the top of the water and get some more surface agitation. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with again here. And then lastly, we have the filter media. It comes with one dense foam and then some filter floss. It has a bag of ceramic rings. It has a little glass scrubber, which is kind of cool. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. And then it has a couple bags of charcoal, which I actually don't use very often. I'm gonna replace that with something else that I'll show you shortly. All right, so we have the top tray here. And we already have some filter pads in the, most of these trays. One more filter pad with charcoal more filter floss. So a total of five trays, and I'll show you what I'm gonna put in each of these. Okay, so with the pin plaques, the water will fill up in the canister, and it'll flow from the bottom up through the top and then back to the tank. So what I typically like to do is put the first tray at the bottom with your mechanical filtration. This will get a lot of the debris and waste collected at the bottom so that some of the clean water can flow up through your biological or your chemical filtration in the preceding baskets. So I'm gonna start with a basket that has the most coarse mechanical filtration followed by filter floss. This is gonna be the first basket that I put in here. Then I'm gonna find a basket of filter floss. I'm actually gonna add an extra little piece here since there's some room just to get this water as filtered as possible before it gets to the biological filtration. I'm gonna put this guy in here, making sure to line up the tubes, making sure it clicks in. So I'm gonna have one more filter floss tray, and then I have a couple other things here. So I'm gonna use the ceramic rings that came with the Pimplex, but then I also bought the Marine Pure biofilter balls separately. And I'm pretty excited about this. I, I think it'll work really well from a biological filtration standpoint. Let's get this all set up. And 
then you get your last piece here. It should fit snugly right over the top. And now we got the motor back on and it should clamp seamlessly. If it's off at all, then you need to go back and look at the baskets and make sure they're all lined up. The next step is to attach these valves to the motor unit. Blue with blue and black with black, it's pretty easy. So next you want to put the canister under your tank so you can measure how much of the hose that you need so that you can cut off the piece that attaches to your intake and outtake. I usually sit my canister in a little tote like this just to collect any types of drops or leaks that come out just so I can catch that if it ever happens in a bigger way. I never had that issue but I'm a little paranoid so I'm going to do it. My boy's wicked smart. Alright so the filter's in place, now it's time to attach the hoses. Then you have your intake here, and then for your outtake you can either install the spray bar or this piece which lets you direct the flow any way you need it. Okay, so now we're just going to give a quick product review and just our thoughts on the performance of this filter. I now have two of these and then my brother Quinn has one on a 75 gallon aquarium in his classroom. Overall these filters have held up very well and probably my favorite thing is that they stayed very quiet. I get super annoyed whenever I hear filters humming and buzzing and even the AquaClear 110 on the 75 gallon tank sometimes the, the lid rattles some and it just drives me nuts. But once I installed the Pimplex canister down here and had it on both tanks, even my wife came down and said it sounded very quiet, and I just gave a little fist pump. I also really like that the media baskets hold quite a bit. There's five trays on this version, and even if you go down sizes of the Pimplex to maybe the 1000 or lower, uh, they still have quite a bit of space for media. Maybe not quite as big as the Sun Sun, but I do feel like the flow rate and the overall longevity of these filters do make the price worth it. And then when you consider price, the Cascade 1500 here is about $150 to $170 US on Amazon right now. If you look at comparable filters, maybe the Sun Sun 704B, it's around $100, so you could go a little cheaper. However, I've just had a lot of success with these filters, and I think paying that little extra just gives me the peace of mind that uh, nothing's going to fail and I want to deal with a leak, anything like that. Um, just can't say enough good things about the Pinplax. If you have a 75 gallon aquarium or smaller, I think it's a great filter. Or if you had a 125 gallon tank or something bigger, two of these might do just fine and you might have a lot of success with that. So that does it for our unboxing, setup, and review of this canister filter. We hope you found this information helpful. If you're looking for different canister filter options, I think this one's a pretty good one to go with. But if you've had experiences with this filter, whether it's good or bad, let us know in the comment section below. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week.